Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm bringing you all along as we go to the library and park, and as we do, I want to share some things that have been on my heart lately, as well as some motherhood encouragements and child training tips. So let's jump in. Hello, I'm Stacy, a wife and homemaker of 17 years and a homeschooling mom to eight children. I help equip Christian women to keep their homes with excellence while keeping their hearts abiding in Christ. Welcome to Abiding Home. What is a godly mother? What does she do with her time? How does she interact with her children? How does she teach and train her children? What do her daily actions look like? How does she speak? How consistent is she? What kinds of things does she talk about to her children? What are her main goals and objectives? What kind of home does she create for her family? I like to ask myself these types of questions so that I can gain a vision for who I want to be. And having a vision is a good thing because it helps us know what we are aiming for. But as soon as I gather the answer to these questions in my head, there can be a temptation to feel discouraged at my lack. I see how much I fall short of this beautiful goal. My own sin and failures are discouraging. My lack of physical strength and energy to carry out all of those tasks can feel disheartening. And that's when I have to remind myself that the worldly mantra, you are enough, is actually not true. No, I'm not enough and neither are you. And guess what? That's okay, because God designed it that way so that we wouldn't trust in ourselves, but instead we would be completely dependent on Him for the strength, wisdom, and love to carry out this monumental task of motherhood. In my last video, I shared a full homeschool day in the life from start to finish, but it was only 30 minutes of edited video footage. I sought to capture the heart of what our days at home look like, but what I didn't capture were the hard moments, the bad attitudes that can creep in, the complaining, the exhaustion, the overstimulation. I didn't capture those for two reasons. One is that if it is my children's sin, then I would never want to publicly shame or embarrass them. The other is that even if it's my own struggle, I don't want to glorify sin or complaining in any way. I don't like the hot mess mama trend where everyone talks about how hard motherhood is and makes light of all their shortcomings. But just because I don't share those things doesn't mean they aren't a struggle here in my home. Social media is only a piece of the puzzle. The same is true for what you see of other families when you visit their homes or see each other at church or play dates. People like to fault social media for setting up a fakeade or unrealistic standard, but this has been going on since before we were born. When people were having guests, they cleaned their house and made their best meal. Children were on their best behavior. Families hung family portraits taken in studios where everyone was dressed in their best clothes and smiling. Social media perhaps has given more access to information about others, but it has always been true that people put their best face forward in public. However, it is who we are at home that shows us who we really are. And the reality is life at home is where things get brought to the surface. Our sin is usually revealed within the four walls of our home. This is normal, and it's not something that we should be overly discouraged about or feeling like something is just wrong with us or our family. These times where our sins and bad attitudes are exposed are what the Lord uses to sanctify us. Growth and holiness is a process, and family life is one of the tools the Lord uses for this process. One of the most amazing parts of motherhood is that while we are teaching and training our children, 
God is teaching and training us. So many mamas message me saying, how do you get your children to do their school or chores with good attitudes? Or how do you keep your children from arguing or complaining? When I read these questions, I get the sense that some people believe there is a combination of child training techniques that will make it to where their children are completely trained and the parents no longer need to correct. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way child training and the discipleship of our children is an ongoing process. For the children who do not know the Lord as their Savior, they are slaves to their sin. You can correct and restrain them, but their natural tendency will always be towards what is selfish and sinful. Once children have been saved and are seeking to obey the Lord, they will still battle with their flesh. They will be growing both in maturity and sanctification. Even Christian children need further discipleship and training, and the parents are the primary instrument God has ordained to use in this process. If you think you are doing something wrong because you are still having to correct and teach, then please think again, because that is our job as mothers, as long as the Lord allows us to have these children in our homes and under our stewardship and authority. Child training is a long game, a marathon, but it won't last forever. Our season of raising children will come to an end one day, and that is both a heartache and a relief all at once. Because this job is immensely joyful and wonderful, but it is also long and difficult. Many of us know the fatigue of having cooked, cleaned, paid bills, changed diapers, rebuked, counseled, encouraged, kissed boo-boos, and taught math facts and reading lessons all before 11 a.m. And yet we also know that children are a blessing and that raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord is the main task God has given us to faithfully walk in during this season. Not necessarily because we are guaranteed that our children will turn out the way we hoped and dreamed, but instead to bring glory to our Heavenly Father. We are mothering heartily as unto the Lord, and not to please men or to please ourselves. When we lose sight of this, we will have a difficult time. When we take our eyes off of the Lord and onto the outcome or the difficulty, that is when fears and selfishness quickly creep in. Before you know it, you will begin parenting pragmatically based on what other professionals and mothers say instead of parenting according to the scriptures. And the desire for comfort will lead to an endless pursuit to discover the secret method or parenting technique to make everything run smoothly and to make this job easier. And mamas, that doesn't exist. Believing the lie that raising children is supposed to be easy is what leads many mothers to believing they are failing at motherhood. And it just isn't true. There are so many pitfalls that mamas can fall into, but one that is quite destructive is the comparison trap. When we compare ourselves to other mothers or compare our children to their children, there can only be two outcomes. Either we will feel inferior and like that other mom has it all figured out and we are just big failures, or we will feel superior we will see her flaws and her children's disobedience, and we will become prideful. Neither of these perspectives honors Christ, and neither of these perspectives will lead to true godly motherhood. But what should we do when mom guilt comes knocking at our doors, telling us that we are bad mothers and that we are failing at this very important task? I believe two things are in order. First, Prayerfully examine if what you are feeling guilty about is sin 
or if it's just an unnecessary expectation that you or someone else has placed on you. For example, some moms may feel guilty because they can't make all of their meals from scratch or because they can't buy all organic food. Maybe they feel guilty because they don't have an aesthetically pleasing home, like the ones in magazines or Pinterest boards. These are not reasons to feel guilty, but instead, we must submit to what the Lord has ordained for us in this season of life. We must be content with our store-bought bread or old unpainted cabinets if that is what the Lord has for us right now. But what if our guilt is coming from sins we see? Then there is only one answer to that problem, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We may be only thinking of our sins in terms of how they are affecting us or our family, but that is worldly sorrow. What we must see is that our sins are against a holy God, and that sin will justly reap the fruits of eternal wrath and judgment. So our biggest need is not a change in our behaviors, though that is something we work towards as we repent of our sins. But instead, our biggest need is a change in heart that only comes by hearing and believing the gospel of Jesus Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit. The most important thing we can realize as mothers is that we are sinners in desperate need of a savior. And that even though we all deserve hell and judgment, God loved us and sent his son Jesus to live a perfect life on earth and to die a painful and shameful death on a cross so that he could give us the righteousness and take the judgment for all our sins upon himself. He suffered and died in the place of all those who believe in him. Then three days later, he rose from the dead, demonstrating his great victory over sin and death. This is the gospel, and this is the most important truth that we must believe and walk in. If we are not trusting in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then our mothering and homemaking will only be a temporary and fleshly accomplishment. But when we are truly born again and mothering in the strength of God and under His grace, then our work is sacred and it will impact eternity. We all know that motherhood is hard, but what if we changed the way we think about motherhood? And instead of dwelling on the difficulties, we focused our hearts on the beauty and the wonder of this precious time with our children. This bond between parents and children is a picture of our bond with our Heavenly Father because He has adopted us who believe in Jesus Christ to be His sons and daughters. It is a precious gift to be called a mother and to be given the blessing of children. Yes, training, correcting, bad attitudes, noise, and messes are hard. But we would do well to obey with the scripture's command in Philippians 4.8, where it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. What are the true, noble, and lovely aspects of motherhood? Meditate on those things. Write them down. Speak them out loud. Pray about them and thank God for them. You will be amazed at how this will lift your heart and strengthen you for this journey. I'm so thankful that you all came along with us today. I pray this video encouraged your heart and pointed you towards Jesus Christ. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. May the Lord bless you and keep you abiding in Him.